Hey, Mr. Sullivan, back with you again here. Today we're going to be talking about recursive formulas, okay? Recursive formulas. Now, imagine a world where Mr. Bruss is in charge, and he decides that every day he is so awesome, he's going to double the number of him on the planet. So today there's one, but tomorrow there's going to be double, or two, then four. The next day after that, we double it again, eight, 16, 32. Bruss are taking over the planet. Every day it doubles until, yes, it likely seems the end of the world, right? Now, thankfully, this is not the case because that would be too terrifying for reality. But we're going to kind of talk about that. So recursive formulas. Let's take a look at this. We have 18, 22, 26, and 30. What is the next number in our sequence? Well, let's see. What do I do? I'm adding 4 each time here. So it looks like if I add 4 here, I'm going to get my next number is going to be 34, right? All right, now let's talk about this for a second. Okay, so we have our term number, and then we have the answer at that number. So our first term was 18. Agreed. Our second term was 22. Our third term was 26. Our fourth term was 30. So if you think here, I'm adding one each time. Here I'm adding four, right, each time. So to get to my next one, I take my previous one. I, I take my previous one and I add four, and that gave me 34. I add one over here to get the next number, and that's there. All right? So, what is a recursive formula? A recursive formula is a formula that relates a term in the sequence to the preceding term or terms. All right? You must denote the first term in your formula. So, a formula that relates a term to the sequence using the preceding term or terms. So, let's talk about that. Let's go look back here. All right. So... If I was using this one, I have to use my preceding one. So if I'm at stage five, I use my preceding one, which is five minus one or step four. My preceding one to four was the one previous would be four minus one or three, right? So if I'm at stage N, I would have to use the preceding one, which would be N minus one, right? So when I'm here, let's see, what is a formula I could use? I'm going to take my preceding answer, all right? That would be 34 in this case. And then I would do what with it? Every time I added 4. So my recursive formula would be A of N equals my preceding term, A, sub A of N minus 1 plus 4. All right, now, it was very specific. It said we have to denote the first term in our sequence. So let's denote the first term in our sequence. So our first answer is 18. Now, why in the world does it matter that I have to denote the first term? Well, let's imagine our first term was 2. Our first term was 2. Imagine that's our first term. Then I would add 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. See, it's a different sequence altogether. That's why when we write our recursive formulas, we must have our first term. All right? Let's try another one. So what's the next term here? Well, I could add 8 from 4 to 12, but if I add 8 from 12, I get to 20. So it's not adding. Um, let's try multiplying. 4 times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36, times 3 is 108. That looks like it's right. Times 3 would be 324. So let's come up with our recursive formula. G sub n equals our previous one times 3. And we have to start with our first one 
which was 4. All right, that is our recursive formula. Let's graph these. So my first term is 4. That's going to be right around here, right? My second term was 12, which would be right about here. My third term was 36. Now that's a big leap, right? My fourth term was 108, an even bigger leap. See, these are not constant, are they? This is going up much faster. It forms a curve. All right, and what kind of curve does it form? It actually forms an exponential curve, an exponential curve, all right? This curve here is an exponential curve. So there are actually two types of sequences. Let's talk about the first one. The first one is a sequence where each term is the result of adding, adding a previous term and a real number. And this is going to form a linear relationship. So if I add 7 every time, if I add 7 every time, if I start here, I add 7 every time, this, is, this gap is the same. In fact, we call that the constant difference. See, the difference is the same each time here. So that's our constant difference, all right? If I have a geometric sequence, a geometric sequence is when each term is a result of multiplying a previous term and a real number. And this is like the last one we had, which forms an exponential relationship, all right? So it looked more like this. I started here. And the next one went up a little bit, but the next one after that went up a little bit more and a little bit more. And then there was a big jump, right? It looks like a kind of like a bad J, but it's kind of, it's called an exponential uh, relationship. All right. And in this one, we have what we call a common multiplier. A common multiplier. Now let's take, for example, this one. 10... 8, 6, 4. Am I adding a number every time? Well, actually, look, I'm subtracting 2, aren't I? I'm subtracting 2. Well, you have to remember that subtracting 2 is the same as adding negative 2. So adding a negative 2 is still an arithmetic sequence. So if we had this was our sequence, a of n equals our previous minus 2, that's still arithmetic. Likewise, if I wanted to divide, right, if I had my previous term and I divided by 2, well, that's the same thing as my previous term and multiplying by a half. So dividing is also going to be a geometric. So let's take a look at example 1 and example 2. Are they arithmetic or geometric? So example 1... I'm adding a common difference of 4 every time, so this makes this arithmetic. Example 2, I am multiplying by a common multiplier every time of 3, so this one would be geometric. All right? All right, let's try example number 3. What is it going on? From 20 to 33, I'm adding 13 adding 13. So every time I'm going to add 13, so 59 plus 13 is 72. 72 plus 13 is 85. 85 plus 13 is 98. So there are my next three terms. What's a recursive formula for this? Let's see, we could have m of n equals our previous n minus 1 plus 13. And we cannot forget, we have to have our first answer. So m of 1 was 20. Our first number in the sequence is important. All right, is this going to be geometric or arithmetic? Well, this is going to be arithmetic. Why is this arithmetic? We are adding... a... what do we call that again? constant difference 
of 13 each time. And that is why it's arithmetic. It's going up the same amount each time. Forms that linear relationship. And what's that graph going to look like? That graph is going to form a straight line going up and to the right. How would we know it went down? How would it look like this if it went down? Well, if it went down, our numbers would have to go down, right? 10, 8, 6, 4. I'd be subtracting, okay? All right, let's try this one. Ooh, they gave us a graph this time, but they did not give us the information. We could actually write this down, couldn't we? This one is under 2, so the first term would be 1. The second term would be 10. The third term would be 19. The fourth term was 28. So is this arithmetic or geometric? Well, it forms a linear relationship, so it's going to be arithmetic because... That's terrible handwriting. Because it forms a linear relationship. All right, let's find what is a recursive formula. So from 1 to 10, that means that's plus 9, right? So it looks here like I'm adding 9 every time. So our recursive formula, B, B of n equals our previous plus 9. And don't forget our original one, which is B of 1 equals 1. Okay? All right, I want you to pause the video and try this one real quick. So, let's take a look here. Number one, what are the next three terms? Well, it looks to me like we're multiplying by two each time. So, 80 times two is 160, times two is 320, times two is 640. What's our recursive formula? I take my previous answer, I multiply it by two. Ooh, what am I missing here? We have to start with our first one is 5. Because if I started at 10, this would be a different formula, right? Is it geometric or arithmetic? It's geometric because it has a common multiplier of 2. And what's it going to look like? This will form an exponential curve that starts low and goes up to the right. Starts at 5, gradually gets higher to the right. How would we go down to the right? Like this. What kind of, how would I get that? Maybe I start at 100 and I divide by 2. That will get us down and to the right. That would be a constant, our common multiplier of a hat, right? All right, so that is recursive formulas. Good luck on the master check, and don't forget, be the change you want to see in the world.